Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe. So glad you joined me for home worship today. Today, we're going to good praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus, Yeshua, the one who came for you and me and died for our sins, was buried in a rose. Amen? Amen. And so always remember that today is a new day and tomorrow's going to get better. Amen? Amen. So today's message is a pretty deep subject, and it's about communion and the power that's in communion. Brothers and sisters, you know that there's power in the name of Jesus. Yeshua, that's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. There's power in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, and there's power in communion. And it's important that we know that we need to participate in communion. Because why? Because our Lord and Savior told us to. And He told us to do it often. Amen. And that is to remember what our Lord and Savior did for us. Right? He died. A crucifixion death. To redeem man back to God. And that for the forgiveness, remission of sins, so you and me can go to heaven and live forever and ever. So brothers and sisters, Jesus is the new covenant. A covenant is a contract. The first covenant that we know of was found in Genesis. God makes a covenant with Abraham. And in Genesis 17, 9, it reads, and God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. Every male child among you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. And so the Jews, the Israelites, still do this today. It says for every generation. Now, the new covenant, Jesus circumcises our hearts. Yes. And that's important. But the new covenant, again, is Jesus. And what he did for you and me, he shed his blood. Right? And he says that the blood is the new covenant that was shed for you and me. Now, Moses, in Exodus 4, God comes to seek to kill Moses. Why? Because Moses disobeyed that covenant. He did not circumcise his male child. And we read in Exodus 4, 24, And the Lord met him and sought to kill him. In verse 25, then Zipporah, that's his wife, took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskins of the son and cast it at Moses' feet. And so he let him go. And so God let him go. Now the importance to this, brothers and sisters, is if God makes a covenant with you, an agreement, a contract, he bargained by dying on the cross for you. And what does he tell us to do? Communion. Yes. How can anybody refuse that if, his, if they are claiming to be a born-again Christian? How can they say, no, I don't have time to do that. Or say, it's silly. Or it's meaningless. No, brothers and sisters. It's very important. If God was going to kill Moses for not circumcising his kid, that covenant, what will he do to you if you decide you don't have to do communion? It's not important. No, brothers and sisters, it is important. Amen? Amen. So now, when we first hear of communion, is Jesus is coming 
to Jerusalem to participate in the Passover meal. And so let's read a little bit about the Passover meal, okay? And so if you have your Bibles today, turn to Exodus chapter 12. And we'll start reading verse 16 through 19. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. And on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation for you. No matter of work shall be done on them, but that which is everyone must eat, that only may be prepared by you. So you shall observe the feast of the unleavened bread. For on this day, I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generations as an everlasting ordinance. In the first month of the 14th day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven shall be found in your house, since whoever eats what is leaven, that same person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a stranger or a native of the land. Now, brothers and sisters, This is very important because this is an ordinance, right? This is a command, a directive that they are to do this and to continue it forever. And they do it today and they should, right? In the new covenant, we are to participate in communion. Now here, if they disobey this ordinance, what happened? The Holy Word says that they shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. You don't want to be cut off from the congregation of the church of God. Right? Yeah. So, he has made an ordinance, a directive that we are to participate in communion. How often? Well, let's look at it. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. We'll start reading at verse 23. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So we want you to do it often. Now that doesn't mean every day, because he says when you come together, and we will read about that, okay? And we come together every week, amen? Yes, we do. And that's why... If you have been worshiping with Brother Joe in home worship, hopefully you have been partaking in communion with me at the end of the service. And we will continue to do that every week as the Lord instructs us to do it often. Because it's important, brothers and sisters, that we remember what our Savior did on that cross for you and me. Amen? Amen.
Now we're going to keep reading because it's important to realize that it is an important ceremony and has to be done orderly. I'm reading from verse 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats of and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. That's death, brothers and sisters. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chased in by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. That means go to hell, brothers and sisters. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if, if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. Now, I'll address the last part here. They were eating in an unworthy manner here because many would come and they would feast. They would have their lunch. They would get there early and eat it all before the others would come and, and, and partake in communion. And so he's telling them not to do that, right? If you're hungry, eat at home and then come and partake and partake together. One time I was at a church and the pastor said, we have communion over on the side there, so after church, feel free to just partake. What? Is that not doing the same thing? It's not a meal. It's a ceremony, a very, very important ceremony. And it has to be done together, right? It has to be done the way the Lord Jesus did it, exactly, to the T. So important to do it correctly because what? It's an important ceremony that God has put on our hearts, mind and soul to partake in. Amen? Amen. Now in the middle of that passage, it says to examine yourself so that you don't partake unworthy. Now, what qualifies you to partake is you have to love your Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you have to love your neighbor as yourself. And if you are that person, you not only qualify, but God is directing you to partake in communion. Amen? Amen. But if you're a non-believer, you do not partake in this. It's not for you. Right? If you're a perpetual sinning, if you have sinning the way you did before you were saved, right? Remember, the scripture says, if you sin willfully after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. And that sacrifice was Jesus dying on a cross for you. So, if that's you, you've got to make some changes. And then you can partake. Right? Because why? Because you can get sick. You can even die. Yeah. So it's for the, the believers that have decided to follow Jesus, to obey Him, to please God, and do His will. And that doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. You know that. He knows that. Only Jesus walked the earth perfect without sin. And we just praise God, our Lord and Savior, because when we do stumble and fall and we sin, we ask God for forgiveness and He forgives us. Why? Because He died on the cross for you and me. We are washed with the blood of Jesus, sealed for the day of redemption, and written in the book of life. Amen? 
Amen. So we praise him and we give him all the glory and we partake in communion as he has directed us to do so. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, if you haven't already, please go and get a piece of bread and a little wine and we will partake in this important ceremony. Amen. So brothers and sisters, if you haven't asked God for forgiveness, you haven't searched your mind of what you did yesterday, today, or throughout the week, you need to. On your own, take a moment and think back and ask the Lord for forgiveness. And then join me in a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we humbly come before your throne. We thank you, Lord, for sending your only begotten Son to come incarnated in human form, to die a sacrificial death for our sins, for the remission of sins, and to redeem us back to you. And we just thank you, Lord, so much. And we thank you, Jesus, Yeshua, for being obedient unto death as God's will was. We just thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for all things. We, we can never repay you, Lord, but we can do our best, Father, to please you and do your will. Please help us to do that every day of our life. And we just praise your name and give you all the glory and your will always be done, Father, not ours. I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So after the Passover meal, Jesus took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it and he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me and we'll eat together. Then he took the wine and he said, This is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. And we'll drink together. Brothers and sisters, It's important that we remember what our Lord and Savior did for us on that cross when his joints were falling out after they had whipped him severely where his, his back was just horribly, horribly broken, full of blood. Can you imagine? Our Lord but he took it. He was obedient unto death. He took all the ridicule for you and me and died a suffering death. It's just heart wrenching. It's a bittersweet feeling. It's sad that that it had to happen that way. If there was any other way, it wouldn't have happened. Trust me. 
But it was the only way for you and me to be saved. And he was obedient unto death. And our Lord sacrificed his only begotten son. So let us go out and, and be the best servants that we can to better ourselves in grace and walk as Jesus did. So today is a new day, brothers and sisters, and tomorrow will get better.